Okay, so in our last video, we got this frog to jump. Now I know that was a little bit complicated and I apologize for that. Um, like game programming tends to be a little bit harder than typical programming because it has a lot of code that just doesn't look very familiar. But keep in mind when I was learning how to do it, which I did this self-taught through videos like you're watching right now, I didn't understand most of what I was doing for a few months. <laughs> so you'll get used to it. Um, just keep coding along and experimenting with things. But for now, we're gonna start coding um, our second enemy, which is gonna be an eagle. Now I have great news, uh, the eagle is significantly easier to code than the frog. So we're going to give it a sprite renderer. And let's go check out our eagle. Okay, so now we have our eagle and we're going to set its sorting layer to be enemy so that we can see it and just make it a little bit bigger. I don't know where it is. There it is. Oh, we still can't see it, weird. So I noticed that my eagle has a Z axis of negative 343. Sometimes when you create a new object, Unity just kind of does its thing. So we're gonna set that to zero and it's gonna make our eagle um, pop right up where it's supposed to be. So what we want our eagle to be able to do is just move up and down. However, we're not gonna make a new controller called an eagle controller and the same way that we made a frog controller. And the reason why is because in the future, we're also gonna to wanna to make other things move up and down. So we're gonna make a generic script called move along path controller. And anything that we give this script to will be able to follow a certain path that we set. Uh, so for example, later on, we're gonna be making platforms that move um, in the air, and we'll just be able to add this script and it'll work um, with those platforms too. So we want to code things so that we can reuse things as much as possible. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to have a list of coordinates um, or a list of vector twos to be specific. So with X and Y values. And we're going to have our um, eagle cycle through the list and go towards one point. So like it will go towards one point and then once it reaches there, it will go towards the next point. And then once it reaches there, it'll go towards the next point. And then once it's at the final point, it will go back to the first one. So we're gonna create a public variable called public. It's going to be an array of vector two called set paths. Now an array is basically just a list of variables. So so far we've been working with like single variables um, such as like name equals colon for my name but this is going to just be a list represented in one variable so um, luckily unity allows us to visualize this so it'll be a little bit easier to explain rather than typical programming so if we set this to size um, 2 because our eagle is going to move, be moving up and down and then we copy this x in there and then we copy this y and then if we move our eagle up a little bit to about here, we can copy that one into the second one. So now at the very beginning, our eagle will move towards element zero, um, which is negative 0 0.22. So you can almost imagine it working like this. And then once it gets there, it will go to the next one, which is 1.13. And our X axis is the same because we're not moving it right or left. So this one set path variable, you can see how it just holds multiple values. Now you can see how it says element zero and element one. That's gonna be how we access um, the different values. So for example, um, this 4.67 and negative 0 0.22, we can access if we typed in set paths zero. Whereas if we typed in set paths one, the vector to it would give back would be um, the one down here. So you can just see based on element zero and element one, which one we're gonna be accessing. So another variable that we need to know is which one we're currently on. So we're gonna have public int current path index. So we're gonna set it to zero. Now this might be a little bit confusing, but let's just try and dissect it a little bit. So if we were going towards the first element in Seth paths, we wouldn't type in set paths zero because we don't actually know what element we're on when we're typing the code. We would type in current path index. So let's say our current path index is zero. That essentially is typing in 
that. Whereas if our current path index is one, then we're typing in that. So adding the variable here is just a way to make a change dynamically without us having to type it in. So whatever our current path index is, will be the, um, the element that it grabs out of this set paths array. So in order to make our bird move in our update, we're gonna have um, transform dot position equals vector two dot move towards transform dot position set paths current path index speed which we haven't set yet and then we're going to multiply that by our real world time time dot delta time so now if we go back up here we can just set our speed public float speed equal to like four so what's going on here so we've got this vector two dot move towards and basically what that does is it takes one value, which is our current position. So it's gonna say take our current position and move it towards this position. So if our current path index is zero, then we're going to be moving towards element zero in set paths. And then this will determine how fast we move there. So if you decrease the speed, we'll move there at a slower speed. If we increase, increase the speed, it'll move at a faster speed. So now we're moving towards um, this element and set paths. Now we need to detect if we've reached our location. So we're gonna say if transform.position.x equals set paths current path index.x and the exact same thing for our y values. So if our x axis and our y axis equals the x and y axis of set paths, then that means we've reached that location. So we will add one to current path index. And then we're going to say if our path index is now greater than set paths dot length, then set it back to zero. So what does this mean? Okay. If set paths dot length, if there's two elements in it, then the length of it is two. So if current path index has reached two, then that means we've reached our final location. And now we want to wrap it back up to our first location, which is zero. So basically we've reached the last location in the list, go back to the first location. So I'm kind of hoping these comments are helping along the way um, and feel free to make your own because obviously I can't comment everything, but I'll do my best to make it as easy to understand as possible. Now, if we go back to our game, let's see if everything comes together. Okay, perfect. So as you can see, the bird moves, uh, we can just decrease the speed and it keeps swapping between current path index of zero and one because there's two elements. Once it reaches zero, it goes to one and then it loops back. What's cool though is because of the way we've designed this, we can actually set as many elements as we want. So if we set these four, for example, it should move in a square. Yeah. So you can experiment and just make it move on whatever path you want right now. So even if you don't quite understand the code, that's completely fine because because of the code that I've written, you're now able to take this piece in the inspector and you're able to edit it to make the game that you want. We're gonna set that back down to two though. Okay, so I just realized my webcam may have been getting in the way of this and I want to make sure that you see exactly what's going on here. So I'm just going to set it to the left for now, and then I'll move it back right after here.